Welcome and greetings, career-minded superstars. You are listening to the exclusive Career Coach, your podcast for all things career. And I'm Lisa Edwards, the indispensable career coach for superstars just like you. Now let's dig into this week's topic, shall we? Go from dragging yourself to work each day to finding a job you love. The Career Spring program is for high achieving and ambitious mid level professionals like you who are looking for a job that uses your zone of genius, recognizes your value, and pays you what you're worth. If you're ready to learn more, schedule a complimentary consult using the link to my calendar in the show notes. Be sure to follow me on Exclusive Career Coaching on Facebook. Lisa Edwards on LinkedIn and Lisa.Edwards on Instagram. Greetings. Happy September, guys. Hey, I want to apologize again. I'm recording this right after coming back to work from COVID. So if I sound a little rough, it's for that reason. I want to let you know and or remind you if you listened last week that I am doing a rate, review, and subscribe contest this month for the podcast. So to participate, go to your podcatcher of choice. You can rate for one entry into the contest. You can subscribe for two entries and you can review the podcast for four entries. Send me an email at lisa, L-E-S-A, at exclusivecareercoaching.com to let me know that you're in there so that I don't miss your contribution. And the winner will be chosen on September 30th at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And you will receive a $250 Visa gift card mailed to your home. So I hope that you will participate in that rate, review, and subscribe. We're going to talk today about what is your reason for being using the concept. It's a Japanese concept called Ikigai. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I was really taken by this concept and I marinated on it for for quite some time before doing this episode. The Japanese think of Ikigai as the answer to a life of purpose. And in practice, they kind of use it as a lifestyle, which the Japanese are pretty instinctually living. To quote the Ikigai Living website, dot com website, quote, your Ikigai wakes you up in the morning and leads you away from a mundane status quo lifestyle. It empowers you and drives your action and purpose. Now, let's drive that down a little bit. Your ikigai wakes you up in the morning. So remember, we're talking about living a life of purpose. Your reason for being, it gets you up and out of bed in the morning, leads you away from mundane status quo life. I think most of us would agree that we want less mundane and less status quo in our lives. And then it empowers you and drives your actions and purpose. We want to be empowered. We want to have that drive, but we want that drive to be for the right reasons. And so I want to drill down on these four concepts of Ikigai today, and I'm I'm using myself as an example. So my encouragement to you is to take these concepts and, and journal your answers to these, and I'm going to give you some specific prompts along the way. So Ikigai is the intersection of these four things, what I love, what the world needs, what I can be paid for, and what I am good at. Let me give you those again. What I love what the world needs, what I can be paid for, and what I am good at. So if we kind of drill that down to its its core, it's it's I'm drilling this down to my passion, purpose, and profit. As I mentioned a moment ago, I recommend journaling your answers to these questions. If you are seeking your professional purpose, if this is something that you have been contemplating for a while or kind of struggling with, or maybe you're thinking about a significant career shift and you just aren't sure what, I think this is a great resource for you to use. So first, we're going to talk about what I love. As you journal your responses to this prompt, I recommend avoiding universal responses. So what I love, if you put, you know, my my husband, my wife, my children, my family members, you're probably not going to get a lot of insight from those because those are pretty much everybody will say that they love their children or their spouse or those kinds of things. So five responses that I wrote down were, I love helping people navigate their careers. I love coaching. I love making presentations and podcasting. I love writing resumes and I love writing in general. So writing newsletters, writing other communications, writing the the content for my podcast. I love that. 
I would recommend for this prompt of what I love that you fill up an entire page of paper. So take a legal pad out and fill up the entire page listing the things that you love. Now, notice that I didn't say, you know, I love my dog and I love flowers after the rain <laughs> because we really are for this purpose. We're looking at, you know, your professional purpose, your reason, professionally speaking, for being. So I think thinking about it in those contexts is going to be more useful to you than thinking about it in a bigger picture with a lot of other areas of your life. So that's what I love. The next one is what the world needs. Obviously, the world needs a lot of things, so I recommend that you focus your responses on the things that you're in your wheelhouse. So I could say, I think the world needs cheaper gas prices, thank goodness they're coming down now, but I have responded with a need that I have no control over. If I were, let's say, the CEO of a gasoline company, or maybe I owned a local convenience store, I might have some control over gas prices, but I don't. And if we go, I'm a huge fan of some of the Covey philosophy. And one of them is this concept of your your sphere of influence and your circle of concern, right? So your circle of concern is disempowering because you spend time in this area that you're concerned about, but you have no control over. You have no ability to make change. Your sphere of influence is where you can make that change. So you want to keep your what the world needs in within your sphere of influence. So here are five things I think the world needs that are within my circle of concern. I think the world needs more people who love and are fully engaged with their jobs. I think the world needs a more effective way to connect employers with quality employees. As I've said many, many, many times, job boards are broken. I think there's got to be a better way. I also think the world needs affordable coaching for people who need help in navigating their, their careers. In general, coaching has become outrageously expensive and I'm railing against that right now and that again is I I can't control what other people charge for coaching but I can make in my sphere of influence I can make coaching more affordable. I think the world needs job seekers who have support and encouragement from other job seekers. So they need to know they're not alone that they're in they're in community while they're doing this. And then finally I think the world needs help for people who need to manage their minds around their job search, their careers, their marketability. So understanding that role of mindset in their career and their career success. So again, my prompt for you is to fill up as much of a full page as you can on this prompt, remembering to keep your responses in your wheelhouse. So what the world needs, then fill up the whole page. The third one is what I can be paid for. Most of us need to make money following our purpose unless we're trust fund babies who get to go around and be altruistic all day, every day. So take your previous list of what the world needs and think about the, the job titles, the opportunities that you might find that you might get paid for in delivering what the world needs. So, okay, I've identified what the world needs. How does that look in terms of what I could be paid for? So here's my list. So the first, what the world needs was more people who love and are fully engaged with their jobs. And here was my response on how I can be paid for that. I can use my writing talents and presentation skills to deliver this information to job seekers via newsletters, speaking engagements, podcasts, and coaching. Now, I'm an entrepreneur and you may not be. So you might think about, okay, what are the kinds of companies who need this thing I've identified that the world needs? What are the roles within those companies? What specific skills would I bring into that role? The second what the world needs that I had was a more effective way to connect employers with quality employees. And my response was for what I can be paid for is I'm not sure what this might look like. But I want to create something that is easy for employers to use and more friendly for employees while also being highly effective. To be completely honest with you, I have a folder in my file cabinet. I've had to put it down for some reasons lately and, and not, not go there because I'm working on other phases of my business. But the folder is called WODO. It's W capital W-O, capital D-O, WODO. And it stands for World Domination. It is my folder of how I can make this happen where we have a better system to connect employers and employees. So that one's, it, it's not as clear to me, but I have that vision and I know it's something the world needs. 
The next uh, What the World Needs I had was affordable coaching for people who want help in navigating their careers and what I could be paid for. I could offer group programs that keep the cost more affordable without sacrificing any of the quality. So I can deliver really high quality programs, group programs that then bring the cost down as opposed to one-on-one coaching. And then the next What the World Needs was job seekers need support and encouragement from other job seekers. And what I can be paid for is it can be baked into the group programs that I offer. I can create a Facebook group, maybe a LinkedIn group for job seekers. I can help bring them together to support each other. And the final what the world needs was help for people who need to manage their minds around their job search, their careers and their marketability. And what I said that I could be paid for is whether I'm leading a group or working with a client one on one, I can use the various tools that I have, the thought model and other tools that I've developed to help my clients manage their thoughts during their job search. So that's translating what the world needs into what that might look like for me. Again, it could be job titles. It could be companies. It could be industries. It could be, you know, specific skills that I want to use within that job. And then finally, the last ikigai is what I am good at. And these should be specific skills that you bring to the table. And these should be pretty easy for you to identify. Certainly, this is an activity that I go through with my clients when I'm writing their resumes is, you know, what are you really good at? What do others constantly comment on that you're really good at? What do you see? So here are five of mine. Number one, establishing rapport with prospective clients and others I come in contact. So I'm really good in the consult of developing rapport quickly. It's directly tied into my personality type as a Myers-Briggs type indicator Master practitioner, I have recognized that that is a skill of my personality type. The second one is asking incisive questions that give me the information I need to work effectively with clients. Clients are always telling me I'm asking really tough, really good questions. And I, inside, I'm like, yay, every time they say that. The third one is writing. So whether I'm writing resumes, LinkedIn profiles, newsletters, podcast show notes, I'm a great writer and no matter what, I'm a fantastic writer. The fourth thing I put is using humor in the coaching process to lighten the intensity while also getting the point across. I'm really good at lightening the mood and getting the point across with humor and not being so serious all the time. And then the fifth one is influencing others. So whether I am selling them a package of my services or selling them on a strategy I want them to try out. I am very influential. People tend to believe me. They tend to trust me and try out what I'm telling them to do. All right, so let's bring all of that together. Remember, Ikigai is the intersection of what I love, what the world needs, what I can be paid for, and what I am good at. Again, journaling really helps here. So bring your answers to these four prompts into a single focus and then create a page full of possibilities. I would recommend that you initially don't edit your responses. So just take all of that information, maybe put all four sheets out in front of you where you can see them all at one time and then start to come up with possibilities. Like what is all of this saying to me? What did I say? What I could be paid for? Let's drill down on that a little bit more. What am I good at? Where where could I be paid for all those things I just said I was good at? Don't edit it. Don't don't editorialize as you come up with this initial list. Just get them on there. I, I use the rather crass term of say I vomited up. Just just vomit up all your responses and don't edit through the lens of, oh, that wouldn't work. That's crazy. That's impractical. Like get the ideas out there because a lot of times when you come up with something that seems fantastical as a possibility for your career, there's a kernel in there, right? So either the thing that you think is so fantastical and crazy isn't all that fantastical and crazy at all, or if we drill it down, and especially when you get the help of a coach to help see maybe what where your blind spots are, you can see the nugget that's in there, the juicy thing that is very practical for you to pursue. So once you've created that initial list, then begin to cross out ideas for legitimate reasons. So again, don't shy away from it because it maybe seems impractical or crazy, but rather 
discriminate based on what really appeals to you and excites you. So I'll give you an example from this is, oh gosh, how far am I going back? 15 years ago. My mother was an interior decorator, meaning that she, when I was early ages and she was still married to my dad, they owned a paint and decorating company and she was the decorating part of it. And after they divorced and sold the business, she worked for two other companies doing the decorating. So she didn't have an education. She didn't, she graduated from high school, but she didn't have a college degree and she wasn't a a designer, but she was very good at decorating specifically around paint, wallpaper, that kind of thing, you know, fabrics that match the paint and wallpaper, all that kind of stuff. And I always thought an interior designer was kind of the career that I might, (laughs) you know, that other, that other road not chosen. And so I had an excellent library in the last university that I worked at, at Truman State University, for career seekers. So books on all kinds of different careers that students could check out. And I checked out myself the book on being an interior designer. And so rather than like, you know, just saying, no, that's I'm too old to go back to school or whatever, I thought, let me really look at this thing and see what it takes. And what I walked away from it knowing is that I don't really want to learn things like, you know, how many how often I should put a outlet on the wall or how do I make this place, you know, ADA accessible or, you know, fire codes and all that stuff. I just like decorating so kind of like my mom I kind of like the decorating piece but I don't want to be a designer where I have to worry about codes and you know compliance and all that stuff so I really looked at the looked at that career more closely before walking away from it so that's what I want you to do with this list is start to think of it as okay Here's why that doesn't that doesn't appeal to me because of this. Or let me explore that a little bit further before I cross it off the list. Here's one that's really bubbling up for me. Let me circle it or star it or whatever you want to do. As I mentioned a moment ago, really helpful to have a coach, maybe a trusted friend, but certainly a career coach for this phase because they can help you to see what you may not be in, in a perspective to see. I'm working with a client right now and I had him do several exercises before coming to his first coaching session and he had some insights based on all of the work that I had him do about the direction that he should go but I saw some things that he didn't see and he was very intrigued by the things that I brought up for him so as far as what to do next there are many possibilities so as I mentioned you may want to do an informational interview with someone about that career you may want to shadow somebody you may be at the phase of your career where an internship looks you know makes sense but hopefully the ikigai has got you thinking about what you were put on this earth to do and how to live that life of purpose how not to just you know do more of the same thing especially if the same thing you've been doing is not bringing you true joy and fulfillment i hope this has been helpful and i will see you next week take care You've been listening to the Exclusive Career Coach with Lisa Edwards, CEO of Exclusive Career Coaching. It would be great if you would rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. Also, I want to be your career coach, so be sure to ask questions about your career management challenges and job search situation. Until next time.